I'm biracial and I'm proud I'm biracial and I proclaim it loud I'm biracial, no hate can keep me down No matter what my haters say I proudly rep both of my races today I'm biracial and I'm proud I'm biracial and I proclaim it loud I'm biracial and no hate Salam alaikum YouTube was cracking. It's your angry biracial back with another video. Y'all know how I do. Gotta keep things real all the goddamn time. And I gotta keep my foot on the necks of these motherfucking kangs. This video was pretty interesting. It's about a kang who's been robbing this, this convenience store for a long time. He's called the Gatorade Man. Let's go ahead and dive into it. This man looks like a regular shopper coming in to pick up a few goods at his local convenience store. He's anything but regular. He opens up his blue bag and dives in. He fills his bag with chips, cakes, candy, and soda. And when he's done, he just walks out. This man has been serial thieving at the same convenience store for the better part of a year. Man, what is up with Kangs and, and them not wanting to work? What's up with Kangs and the pure laziness? Like, if this Gatorade Kang put as much effort into thieving the store, into working a job, he'll be well off. I mean, all the energy they take to break the law and to rip other people off, if they put that into something productive, they can do great fucking things. But it's like they'd rather just fucking thief and then cry about, cry about it when they get caught. He's there so much, they give him a nickname, Gatorade Man, for his pension for the thirst-quenching sports drink. At least once a week, he waltzes in, grabs some snacks, then waltzes right back out. Once a week. And he, he keeps doing this because he's coddled. He's a coddled ass fucking king. I don't understand why people are so afraid to hold these kings a, a, accountable. You know, it's like, you know, the, these kings throw around the word racism. Oh, you're just doing it because I'm black. Every five minutes that it has a lot of people, a lot of non-black people so afraid to hold them accountable. Look, I own a store. I'm a store owner myself. I'm not. Ohio is a stand your ground state. I am not afraid to, to stand my ground. I have a sign up in my store that says the exact same thing. You know what I mean? So it's like people need to stop calling these kings. Give them some good old street fucking justice and this stuff would stop 100%. Until one day he walks in, fills up his bags, and as he's about to walk out again, yeah. the clerks lock the doors. He's trapped. The clerk recognizes the man and presses a button that locks the door. Oh, well, I'm glad the clerk finally decided to do something. This man's been coming in for months. Stealing hundreds of dollars worth of shit at a time. You know, all the restock, all that shit costs money. You know, again, as a store owner, all that shit costs money. You know, that I'm losing because a, a thief th th that y'all keep allowing to steal from your store. People, people do to you what you allow them to do. As soon as you stop allowing them to do it, they can't do it no more. You know? He calls 911. But this thief is not going to wait for police to arrive. He kicks once, twice, still no luck. He pushes and pulls at the door. He takes a running jump and kicks some more. He puts the stolen drinks back. I think it's funny how how we how we put it back, thinking that that's gonna change anything. You've been robbing the store for fucking months, you know. And you've been terrorizing the store, terrorizing my employees. You're making 
the, the store an unsafe environment for those who work there, you know, and not to mention costing me hundreds of probably thousands of dollars. So it's like putting the drinks back isn't going to do shit. You're still, you know, if it was my store, he would still have to face the justice. And drops the bag of poached goodies on the shelf. Let me know. Let me know, man. He grabs just one drink to help him in his quest. <laughs> he got thirsty, you know, put, put, put him back all that stuff that he stole. He got thirsty damaging that, that store owner's door. So he had to go steal another drink to quench his, his thirst. <laughs> That's one of the most kangliest things I've seen, you know I me? Mean? <laughs> this motherfucker is stealing and then he puts it back because he's caught and he, then he gets tired from kicking the door. The, I'm, I'm in here. I might as well just get another get, get another Gatorade. Quit this Kang thirst. You know what the fuck? Escape. <laughs> Finally, after a solid five minutes of kicks and flying jumps, the plexiglass comes off, and he crawls through. And he's off again. But in a surprising twist, the store's owner, Dennis Alloy, finds an unconventional solution to ending the pilfer. Really, an unconventional solution? The only solution is it should be, should be either, uh, you know, exercising your right to stand your ground on his ass, if y'all you, if you get what I mean, or have his ass arrested. He can rot in prison for for the next 10 to 15 years, you know? But let's get to the next part. A surprising twist, the store's owner, Dennis Alloy, finds an unconventional solution to ending the pilfer. And here with us now is Dennis Alloy, the owner of that convenience store. Dennis, thank you so much for being here. Hi, Gio. Thanks for having me. The Gatorade man was constantly... They have Survivor underneath his name. You see that? Look, it says Survivor underneath his name. Why did they have that? Let's pull it up. Survivor of what? Like, he's the store owner. He didn't interact with this guy. I mean, while he was robbing it. Survivor. See that shit? Dennis Alloy Survivor. Thanks for having me. The Gatorade man was constantly targeting your store. What kind of impact did that leave on you and your staff? It drives me crazy. It takes a toll. For my employees, yeah. I don't want them confronting him physically. There's just It's just not worth any potential bad result he comes at will and gets away with it at will he would come in oftentimes it was a few days in a row he doesn't want them you know confront them physically not only because his employees could, could get hurt but if he hurts him his store can possibly get sued you know and 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 this guy can you know this cane could cry racism or, or, or excessive force or whatever there's all kinds of shit when he comes into owning the store that that they have to, to take into account, man. It's like, and it's bullshit. That nine times out of ten, these criminals have more rights than, than, than you. You know what I mean? Like, I, I've heard stories of, of, of this guy that robbed this person's house. And, and, they, and they, they climbed in through a window on the roof. And they fell down. They fell on, on the kitchen counter or something. And they cut their leg on a knife. And they sued the homeowner because of that. I mean, you break into my house and you cut yourself. And you can sue the fucking homeowner. So it's just ridiculous how criminals are fucking coddled. It is fucking crazy. So then I would see him for a little while. Then it would be a lot. And these guys that work for me, they have some responsibility in the store. And I, they feel terrible when things like this happen. There needs to be some consequences on what happens. I'm not looking to throw someone in jail and ruin their lives, you know, for what is considered petty theft. You don't want to throw them in jail and ruin their lives. He's ruining your business. He's costing you hundreds of, if not thousands of dollars. He's costing, you know, maybe costing you employees. He broke your, your fucking plexiglass door. Plexiglass is, is not cheap. And that's why these kings do it over and over and over again, because they are fucking coddled. You should go full force on the ass. Lock his ass up. I guarantee he won't come back for the next 10 to 15 years if he ever does. You know, that's why they keep doing it, because they're going to get a slap on the wrist, because a lot of fucking places are afraid to go full on out on these fucking cans. 
but there needs to be some consequence. Dennis, how did you decide to put an end to this? There was a local neighborhood guy. We were just discussing what issues I have as a businessman. And I talked about the crime and the shoplifting, and I showed a picture of Gatorade Man. And, and the guy there from the neighborhood is like, I know that guy. And... Oh, sorry. Let's get to the next part. Stop. The guy there from the neighborhood is like, I know that guy. And... He's like, I'm going to take care of this for you. And two days later, he texts me and says, I want to meet you, and uh, I've got the guy here. So let's have a meeting. How did that meeting go? I was not happy about him at that point. He was a big problem. He was terrorizing my employees. He had stolen from me multiple, multiple times. So I went. You know, this store owner, he just seems extremely passive. And he seems like he doesn't want the headache. But it's like you have to make a stand at some point you have to take drastic measures and and set an example because i guarantee you more people are more kangs are going to come and try to rob this motherfucking store because they know that he's going to be easy on them he you know that they, they can talk to him and and, and he'll forgive them and that you gotta set the fucking example if, if you're not gonna stand your ground at, at your store then then have this motherfucker arrested and, and locked away for, for, for the next several years. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure if this dude's sitting in, well, he's a fucking king, so the, 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 he might not even learn from that, but at least your store won't be terrorized for the next several years. You, you can recoup, you know, but just pathetic how they coddle these fucking kings. Went in with kind of a angry mood and, and we started talking. And, and again, I don't want to put people in jail for things like this and ruin them. But we talked and he kind of explained that you need to put him in jail. He needs to be ruined for this. Maybe going to jail is the wake-up call that he fucking needs. Keep coddling him. He's going to come back. Me and, and, you know, he was sincere and apologetic. He talked about his drug problem and how it's been. Of course he's sincere. He doesn't want to go to jail. <laughs> you know what I mean? Anyone that doesn't want to go to jail is going to be sincere. Like, hey, man, I'm really sorry. I'm sorry, man. You know, I don't just don't arrest me. <laughs> of course he's sincere. Fuck. And he, he, he has a drug problem. He, he was stealing food. He wasn't st I, I, I'm just going to skip that part. Go ahead, man. The rehab, I felt like he was trying to address that. And I think he understood that you know, this had to end. And we kind of you know, just shook hands. Man, I apologize. I sincerely apologize. Dennis, I apologize to Dennis. Y'all remember me? I came in and took stuff. And I apologize. He worked for me for a full day, probably 10 hours. He uh, scrubbed my dispensers and cleaned up the parking lot. Uh, I saw him on the cameras as I was sitting in my office just to make sure he was doing what he had to do. And actually, I wish I had a, my employees could do as good a job as he did. So after the conversation, I hadn't seen him for several weeks. 10 hours of working for you was not enough to, to pay you back. And, that, and that's not going to deter him from coming back again. Because he knows, he fucking knows now, you know, that whenever times get hard for him, he can come and rob your ass and you ain't going to do shit about it. One night, I got a phone call from an employee saying, hey, uh, he's back. And I'm like, no way. But since that one relapse, I have not seen him in the store since. But the bottom line, it just had to stop. And I think uh, overall, it, it worked out. The only way to stop these fucking kings is to lock their ass up. 100%. You know, lock their ass up and then put his face, put, put a, you know, make a big blood poster saying Gatorade man is doing 10 to 15 for, for robbing my store. You, 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 you can be next. You know what I mean? Make an example. It, it is what it is. But a, a lot, look, and I'm going to say this, I probably piss a lot of people off, but you know, that's what I do on my channel. I piss people off. <laughs> and that's why y'all love me, right? But look, it's like the problem I see with this is so many non-black people. So, so some people that, that, that are not mixed with black, that not have black in them, you're, people, non-black people, right? People that are not of African descent are so afraid of being called a racist or so afraid of, 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 of doing anything, you know, against uh, these fucking kings because they don't want to be protested by Black Lives Matter. They don't want to be slandered. They don't want to be whatever. But it's like the motherfucker was robbing your store. 
quit coddling them, you know? And, and, and maybe because I'm half black and I don't have these fears, you know, you know what I mean? That, 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 that some of these non-black uh, store owners have, you know, but it's like, you have to make a stand, man. I guarantee you, your store is going to get robbed a lot more because you're not making a stand and they think they can just come back and talk to you and then everything will be fine. I just can't with, with, with dudes like this. You're being too soft on them. Anyway, that's it. Uh, I got to go. I got a last thing I got to do today, man. This weekend is going to be a busy weekend. I'm going to be in my store almost all weekend because, you know, I got some new products launching. I, I got to get, I got to work on my, uh, you know, my, my barbecue sauces. I got to clean out my, my garage. Cause you know, you know, my, I'm making a whole new, like, like home gym for, for, for my wife here. So it's, you know, I got a lot of stuff I got to do. So I will not be back in my recording studio to do any more videos until like Tuesday. So hope y'all enjoy this. I love y'all. Y'all be safe. Peace. It's angry.